Hi, my name is Aiden Baker, and I'm going to be reading for my story, Blue Faced Honey Eater. Over the years, my wife developed peculiar habits. The strangest, my favorite, is the way she will, on occasion, scrunch up her face and give birth to fruit. The first time she did it, we were at the zoo. We'd spent the day wandering along the gravel paths, pointing at elephants and tigers and spitting camels, sharing an ice cream cup. We were standing by the Pershing Birds exhibit, peeking through the iron cage when it happened. Abel began heavy breathing. I hardly noticed. She simply exhaled a small O, reached into her pants, and pulled them from her. A handful of little red buds. They were coated in a thin layer of mucus and glinted ravishingly in the sun. I wonder, Abel said, holding the slick red things in her palm. Strawberries, I said, amazed. She was a woman of wonders. We fed the berries to the birds. One, blue-faced with a long tweezer beak, nudged himself between bars. Abel pinched a wet berry between the tips of her fingers and offered it to him. He blinked his beady eyes once before snatching it up with a long bristled tongue. He blinked again, snapped his beak, and flitted away. We stayed some time at the zoo, learning about birds, reading the signs. She brought her sketchbook and we sat together on a bench, her scratching charcoal against the page, trying to trace the shape of a particular bird. I watched her progress watched my watch, watched some children play games on a green patch of grass. Abel kept putting lines down, erasing them, adding more. Pretty good ibis, I said. That's what it looked like, at least, with its crude neck and rough beak. It's a spoonbill, she said, not looking up from the page. And there, another habit, not so wonderful. Her urge to correct me. The sun had tucked itself behind clouds by the time I managed to pull her away. On the drive home, we didn't talk about strawberries or birds. I turned the radio dial one way, she turned it the other. When I took the wrong accent, she harped on it. Of course, I could have flipped it on her. Could have mentioned that maybe I wouldn't have been so distracted if someone's sketching hadn't consumed my whole afternoon. I could have mentioned that I, unlike some people, have work to do. But I let her have this. Sometimes it's better to let her go off. I kept my foot on the gas, rolled down the windows. Air rushed in while she squealed and squawked, her loose hair whipping around in the wind. Briefly, I turned towards her. Her mouth takes a beautiful shape when she's angry, and I love the way her brows furrow. She was hot now, enraged. Eventually, she'd tie her out. A month later, there was another incident. We were out shopping, picking up cheese. The refrigerated air gave Abel goose flesh, and she held herself to keep warm. I asked how she was feeling. Savory, sweet, Havarti, Gruyere. She didn't respond, just blinked tight, muttered, oh. Again, the reaching, fingers slipping into her panties to collect the blue pellets. Blueberries, she said plainly, a matter of fact, and showed them to me. Wonderful, I exclaimed in the aisle, among the rows of canned packaged food, thinking that yes, I had married a miracle woman. The dark blue beads glistened magnificently under the fluorescent store lights. I thought it marvelous, a sign. She looked at them, rolled them around in her palms like marbles, staring, saying nothing. I checked out, put our groceries on the belt, handed over my card. Abel stood behind me, silent, the berries staining her hands a sweet purple pink. When we got home, we left the berries out on our porch, a gift for the deer. The habit continued unpredictably. One Sunday in the park, we were splayed on a blanket, staring up at the maple leaves. I was telling a story, a faint childhood memory, something about a swimming pool, when she grunted. Her face contorted into a confused kind of pain. Go on, she said, rubbing her side. So I went on, describing the chlorine smell, fat old men in tight trunks, the whistle shrill and piercing. Suddenly, Abel let out a moan, interrupting me, and the memory drifted from reach. I stopped and looked at her. Brow furrowed, eyes closed, jaw clenched. She grabbed her side. Near us in the grass, kids were running in circles, shrieking. Not it, not it. Abel grimaced. Somewhere on the other side of the field, there was a birthday party. Over there, under the trees, I could make out a few colored hats, the sound of horns. My wife groaned again, loudly, and scrunched up her face. I asked how she was feeling, but she just closed her eyes, exhaled, and out came a handful of grapes, light green and plump. They plopped right onto the picnic blanket. She picked them up by the stem, holding the globular cluster up to the light. They glimmered in the sun. 
green and round and dripping goo. Fabulous, I exclaimed and took them from her. I held the viscid cluster in my palm, amazed. Abel kicked off her shoes and leaned into the grass. All around us, kids were running and shrieking, making circles and circles. Thank you.